Hello. I probably get more questions through my solution-focused brief therapy courses on the miracle question than on any other topic. How do you use the miracle question? And usually the question goes, as it did this week, how could I use the miracle question with somebody who has suffered a loss or a different type of trauma? I want to clarify a couple of points. And the first thing I would say is I wouldn't ever use the miracle question if you're not confident about using it. Some people stumble with it for some reason, and I think they get hung up with that word miracle. Um, well, how can a miracle happen when somebody's just died? They'll only say they want the person back. Well, of course, but if you phrase the question correctly then um, and follow the wording exactly that's in my notes and in this course, if you've watched it, then you tend to come unstuck less. The other thing is, it's just a question. How do you how do you deal with any question that somebody doesn't respond to you as you anticipated? You simply have to move on. Apologise if you think you've made a mistake, if necessary, whatever it happens to be. But it's the normal set of social skills we use in conversation under any circumstance. So there's no point in being frightened of a question, in, in my view. But having said that, I would say don't use it if you're not 100% or at least say 85% confident because you have to start somewhere. Uh, if you're uncertain about it, if you get the wording wrong, how would it be if maybe there was a miracle isn't going to work? Now, let me explain what I think the mechanics of the or the dynamics of the miracle question should be. First of all, I think it's a mini visualization process. The question is designed to prompt imagination it's designed to get the client to, in their imagination, step into a time when the problem no longer exists, a post-problem time. Now, to that extent, when I'm demonstrating it live, I reckon there's almost a physical dimension to it. Literally, you want the client, metaphorically, although I've said literally, you want the client to step outside their current mindset and place themselves in a, what if this miracle happened and I wake up tomorrow morning and the miracle's happened and wow, the problem that brought us here or the problem we're talking about doesn't exist anymore. Now, the cause of the problem may be a loss. It may be uh, a loved one has died. It may be a catastrophic diagnosis of an illness that is going to end the client's life. It could be t a terrifying event, but that isn't the problem. The problem is the impact of that event on the client and what they want help with from you as the therapist, helper, supporter, whatever you do, coach. What they want help with is moving past the impact and the effects of the problem and living with it or living beyond it if they've managed to relieve themselves of the problem. So you can see what I'm driving at. It's actually a question of, it's a, it's a game in the imagination, if you like. It's a visualization process. So following the exact wording of the miracle question, I'd like you to imagine that you go to sleep tonight. While you're asleep, a miracle happens. You don't know a miracle's happened because you've been asleep. So you wake up in the morning and the miracle means the problem has gone away or the problem that brought us here or the topic we've been discussing or the thing that worries you most, whatever it is that you can you can play around with doesn't exist anymore. You don't know it doesn't exist anymore because nobody's stopped to tell you it doesn't exist anymore because it's a miracle, OK? It's happened while you've been asleep. How will you feel? How will you know? What will tell you that the miracle has taken place? In other words, what will tell you that you are now in a post-problem time, that you are now more resourceful, that you are now more able to do? Now, don't put the words in the client's mouth for all of that, but simply allow them to imagine and to draw out. That's the first thing. It's a dynamic question intended to get the client to move from current mindset to post-problem mindset. Now, the second point about this is people often ask, yes, but I said to my client, supposing a miracle happened and they said, well, the bars would be open all the time and I'd have access to alcohol any moment of my day or night. So what do I do about that? Well, fine, you acknowledge it and move on. And what else? And what else? And what else? You see, you're not obliged to take the first answer that the client gives you. And if somebody is 
suffering as we were talking I was talking about loss for example if somebody is missing somebody they're grieving they're in terrible pain from the loss and I know I know what that's like I always knew during my lowest moments that nobody was going to take that pain away from me but if I was seeking help I would have needed to know there was life beyond the pain and so it's up to the therapist to be creative with the questioning and to keep going, having asked the miracle question, to keep going, to embellish that picture, that image. How will you know? You're getting out of bed in the morning. The problem's gone away. What will tell you that you are now problem free? What will you notice around you? How will others around you respond to you? And that type of thing. One client said to me recently, I'd probably be singing. I always used to be singing in the morning before this happened. OK, I said, and what else? That's nice, singing. What will you be singing? And she hummed a little tune. And then we said, OK, what else? Well, I'd probably be hungry. I'd probably want breakfast. OK, what else? And she had started, by the way, by saying, well, my partner would not have died. He'd be here with me. Well, wouldn't that be nice? Of course, everybody wishes that. I'm terribly sorry you're suffering this loss. Now, the miracles happened. What else would tell you the miracles happened? And so on and so forth. I would say I don't use it in all my sessions. Um, it's nice. It gets some great results sometimes. It's a very clever question, I have to say. But uh, I sometimes forget to use it. Uh, I have other means of getting the same information. So um, it's by no means mandatory. Anyway, some thoughts on the miracle question, a bit rambling, sorry about that. Best of luck with it. Any further questions, send me an email at info at barrywinbolt.com. Here, I put it along the bottom of the uh, bottom of the video here. I'm always happy to answer. And remember, if you want to watch the full recorded session, it's on Udemy. Just look up SFBT or Solution Focused Therapy Barry Winbolt on the Udemy website and you will find it. By all means, enjoy the course. So thank you very much. That's all from me today. And, um, well, hope to hear from you soon if you have any more questions. Goodbye.